you believe it? Here we go again. Playoff hockey is upon us. Vancouver will certainly be favored to win the first series and they kick off against the L.A. Kings. Let's get it on with a couple of bloggers. J.J. Guerrero is a blogger with CanucksHockeyBlog.com. J.J. Hi, Mike. How hey, thanks you? for doing this. Chris, he just wants to be known as Chris. He's an L.A. Kings blogger with the Royal Half blog. How you doing, Chris? Hey, how you doing? Was he afraid not to say your full name in Vancouver? Is that the deal? Uh, I'm just worried that when all the Vancouver Canucks fans come down to Staples Center, they'll hunt me down and, <laughs> and, and you know, kill me. Okay. okay. Uh, JJ, let me go to you first. I mean, what, what, what kind of vibe are you feeling now as this thing kicks off again? Well, I think everyone's just really stoked now. I mean, uh, you look at how this team's played all season long, and there seems to be a, there, there seems to be a lot of ups and downs, and then right, at the la- right in the last weekend of the season, they pull it off and win the President's Trophy you know, for the second consecutive year. Um, I think that win against Edmonton on Saturday uh, really, really uh, boosted morale here in the city and uh, raised all sorts of expectations for this team moving forward. Isn't there a yeah. curse? Isn't there a curse on that President's Trophy? Uh, you know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't take stock into any of those curses. I mean, st- stats have said that if you win the President's Trophy, uh, you're more. Uh, you've got a better chance of winning the Stanley Cup, and that uh, and that success. You know, r- ratio. Uh, uh, gets even better if you win it two uh, two years in a row. So uh, it, it's a big thing. Uh, but you know more than any curse or stats or anything like that, the fact that you'll have home, the team will have home ice advantage throughout the playoffs. I think is the biggest. Okay. Uh, what about factor. what about last year and the hangover from last year, going all the way, going to the very brink, and then you know getting hoofed in the in the in the gut again. <laughs> Well, you know, I don't think there's any doubt that the Canucks went through a hangover at the start of the year, you know. Uh, I mean, it was a long season. It was a short summer, uh, plain and simple, right? And you had some key guys that were uh, that were injured. You had Higgins and Kessler and, uh, you know, Henrik was injured for uh, for part of the uh, the playoffs last year. These guys needed to recover, and they only had two months to do it. So, hey, what's your call? Uh, uh, oh well, I'll never bet bet against the Canucks. I think it'll be close. It's, it'll definitely be a lot closer than what some of the fans I'm seeing here predict. You know, I'm seeing you know four game a four game sweep Canucks in five. And I think it's going to be a lot closer than that. Jonathan Quick's a hell of a goaltender. He's probably the best goaltender in the league this year. I wouldn't be surprised if he won the Vezina. Okay, okay, so. Chris. Let's go to Chris. He's a blogger with the Royal Half Blog, the LA Kings blogger. Chris, what do you think? Well, we have a phrase uh, here uh, in Los Angeles where it's uh, Los Angeles Kings hockey backing into the playoffs uh, for 44 years. <laughs> so um, I don't think there's a lot of confidence coming out of Los Angeles right now. And this is a team that was, you know, in position to take the Pacific crown uh, for the first time since it was called the Smythe Division um, 20 years ago. And they kind of screwed up everything. Uh, it's a different team than, than what the Vancouver Canucks have seen over the, all, this whole year. Um, Jeff Carter has come uh, to this franchise and, and enabled it to score. You know, they're, they're, they're averaging nearly double the amount of goals per game that they were before Carter came over. Um, but, of course, he's out, you know, with an ankle injury. And, and I just saw um, on Twitter reports that he was skating in practice today and should be fine for, for game three. What do, Kings, what do Kings fans think about the Canucks? Do they hate the Canucks? I keep hearing this story. The Vancouver Canucks are the most hated team in the NHL. Uh, you see yeah, this everywhere, I right? I don't know. I think it's kind of a bad rap, well, but this we hear all the time. It's specific to Los Angeles because, I don't know if you know this, being in Vancouver, but to buy a ticket to a Kings game with a flight from Vancouver to LAX and a hotel uh, and sit in a really nice seat at Staples Center is actually cheaper than probably the cheapest seat uh, at Rogers Arena. Probably right. So we get an invasion of fans from Vancouver every time the Canucks come down here, specifically this year they came down for the New Year's Eve game, and it was out of control. Um, so I think that's maybe where the hatred comes from Los Angeles specifically. I will say the one thing I keep hearing over and over again is how, yes, the Vancouver Canucks are, quote-unquote, the best team in the league this year, but that they're not. That even though they won the President's Trophy and even though they're the Stanley Cup you know, uh, finalists from last year, for some reason, people in Los Angeles and I think in other uh, NHL cities under uh, estimate like what this team can do, and they, and, they, and they say that they're just not good, that they're an overrated team. And I think that that's the only thing that the Kings – have coming into the series is just kind of getting into the psyche of the Canucks and, and their team in terms of, of, of a first-round flop. Okay, overrated. J, JJ? 
Uh, well, I mean, I think, uh, I, I don't know if they're overrated if they're being uh, torn down all the time by uh, by other fans. I'm not saying, you know, from the Kings' point of view, but certainly around the league, they're not a very well-liked team. But, you know, someone said, if you want to be hated, you lose, or if you want to be loved, you lose games, right? And I don't think the Canucks are going to want to lose games anytime soon. Uh, you know, the... I think the Canucks are a different team this year. Uh, they're definitely better suited for the playoffs. They're a much bigger team. They've got better balance uh, uh, around their lineup. And I mean, you look at uh, you look at the the top four lines this year. I, I can't see the coach not wanting to play any of those four lines at any point in the game. Uh, last year during the playoffs, uh, you saw a lot of games where maybe Vigneault was rolling out three lines or two and a half lines at most towards the tail end of it. And I just don't think that the Canucks are that are I just think the Canucks are that much deeper this year that they can roll out four lines. And, and healthy, too, right? And healthy, much? yes, absolutely. What's going on with Daniel? Uh, well, I saw I saw on Twitter that Daniel's practicing today, so uh, that's a good sign. I mean, obviously, you want with a concussion, you want to see how he feels after practice, and hopefully he's ready. Okay, Chris, can, the, can these Kings surprise us here? I think so. And, and, and just to touch on what you're talking about with Daniel, I, I just warn you as someone who's watched Mike Richards this entire season, I hope there's not the expectation that a premier player can come back from a concussion and step right in because Mike Richards has been struggling since he got his uh, in November. But I, I think, yes, and as we talked about earlier, you've got the John Quick factor here. Um, he has really kept this team in any sort of competitive state this year. Everyone's talking about him for, for hardware. Um, he is a elite goalie in the NHL, and the Kings have a defense in front of him that is one of the best in the league. Um, the, the, the only way the Kings are going to win this series is by scoring. I mean, they really have struggled with it all year. We've got Dustin Penner with seven goals. Um, you know, Jeff Carter, like I mentioned earlier, has come in and, and fired up this team. So seeing how he responds from an injury uh, will, 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 will be a, a big factor in whether or not this team can, can be competitive okay. with the Canucks. Okay, J.J., where is Luongo's head at? This guy scares me every single time. <laughs> I don't know which guy's going to show up. Well, you know, it, it, it's funny you mention Luongo because uh, I, the Kings are probably in the same situation, or, would, you know, in theory anyway, would be in the same situation as the Canucks are in terms of goaltending because, you know, they've got the young kid Bernier who, who was supposed to take over quick this season, but Quick's play just said, you know, uh, forgot that idea. But anyway, uh, I, th- I think Luongo is going to be a lot better this year. I, I really do. Uh, I think he knows that one wrong move or one bad goal and the coach had so much more confidence in Corey Schneider that they wouldn't hesitate to pull Luongo in favor of Schneider and I think that could be a positive Luongo thrives on that sort of thing he likes knowing that there's someone behind him uh, that's pushing him I think that's part of the reason this uh, goaltending tandem has okay. worked the last couple of years. Oh, okay, the city is going to go crazy again. What's it like in LA, Chris? I mean, do people in LA even care about hockey? Well, there, there is this misconception about that, and I have to tell you, when you go to a Kings game in Los Angeles, and I've actually had Vancouver fans come to Staples Center and tell this to me, they are 18,000 of the most knowledgeable, most passionate hockey fans that you'll see across the country and, and up into Canada. The difference is, from any sort of Canadian city is that doesn't extend outside of stable center you're not sitting in a bar and watching a hockey game or talking about you know what happened in the boston you know new york game yesterday it doesn't no. kind of no they're talking about kobe stable. bryant but yeah it's, it's kobe bryant it's dodgers um it, the, the king's fans are the most passionate of any of the fans in the city they're just kind of not known throughout the okay city. okay here's what we're going to do guys take a break come back with more of the battle of the bloggers your turn phone me up on the open line are you psyched for the playoffs what do you think is going to happen ask a question 604-280-9898 is the number to call me toll free 1-877-399-9898 star 9898 on your cell your calls are coming up Okay, we're setting up the playoffs for you with J.J. Guerrero, who's a blogger at CanucksHockeyBlog.com. Chris, who's a blogger at the Royal Half. That's an L.A. Kings blog. So, Chris, why is it that these L.A. LA Kings fans hate the Canucks fans? You say when the the Canucks are playing in L.A., a lot of the Vancouver fans, they come down there. What, are they obnoxious? What's the deal there? I don't particularly find them to be obnoxious. You know, I I love the Canadian fan, and I actually went up to um, Vancouver for game... Uh, two of the this playoff series in 2010, and I think I was maybe one of three people wearing uh, a Kings hat in the arena. And there were moments that I 
was a little worried that someone was going to pick me up and throw me over the, the railing uh, into the ice, especially when the Kings won. But the, the <laughs> Canadian fans that come down here are knowledgeable. I, I think we're just really sick and tired. Los Angeles is a commuter city. There's very few people who are actually from Los Angeles. I'm one of the few people who have grown up here. So anytime the Blackhawks come in town, anytime the Rangers, the Bruins, the Red Wings, it's a sea of opposing fans. And I think that the Vancouver ones come out in such force that that's why uh, they have this reputation of, of, of being hated by, uh, by a Los Angeles. Okay, well, J.J., why do the Canucks have this rep, though, this ha- hated team rep? Like I saw it, Toronto Star did another big story on this, the most hated team in the league. Is it because of these players who get under the skins of opposing players like Lapierre and Burroughs and these guys? Well, yeah. I mean, I guess part of it is the stuff that gets said on the ice. But, I mean, let's face it, what professional hockey player doesn't say stuff on the ice, you know? Uh I, I don't know what it is. I, I, I'd like to say that part of it is a media spin. You know, things got completely blown out of proportion last year during the Stanley Cup Finals. You know, like things were getting quotes were getting taken out of context by the national media, uh, and it just kind of uh, had this snowball effect. And all of a sudden, the Canucks were the most hated team. Uh, it's hard to hate a team when you've got, you know, two of their leaders. Two of their leaders are the Sedins, who, who. Uh, donated $1.5 million to BC Children's Hospital. You know, tough to hate an organization when they've got all, all sorts of initiatives like Canuck Place and Canucks for Kids. And oh, you think, you think these fans in these other cities care about that stuff? Well, and that's, and that's just it. They don't care. I mean, what they, what they care about is what they hear on, the, uh, on, the, on, the, on TSN, they read on Toronto Star, all that sort of stuff. You know, I, I think deep down, we know us as Canucks fans, we know, we know what we have with our okay. team. We know they've got a bunch of pests, but we know they've got a, we've also got a lot of really good players and a lot okay. of really good people. Okay, is this going to be a tough series, Chris? I mean, any of the Kings, got, any of you guys got any guys you can fight? Oh, yeah. I mean, we've got the, this line of um, uh, Kyle Clifford uh, is a young player who uh, had a great playoff last year, really stepped up when Ante Kovatar was out with his ankle injury. He loves to throw it down. He's, you know, he's a lightweight, middleweight. We've got Colin Frazier, who um, hasn't won a game or hasn't won a fight in anyone that I've seen, but at least will we'll throw down. Um, and then, you know, we had Drew Doughty taking on Joe Thornton uh, a couple days ago against the Sharks. So I feel like the reputation for the Canucks, even though they have all these pests, is that they're a soft team. Oh. And I think that every Kings player is going to, and especially with Daryl Sutter behind the bench now, it's much different culture than, than Terry Murray. I think they're just going to get, you know, in the face of every single player and, and mix Soft. up, because that's one of the few w- ways that they'll be able to win. JJ, are you going to take that? <laughs> well, I don't know. I, you know, you you got to play the Canucks with, uh, I guess the Kings have played the Canucks with, you know, guys like Byron Bitts and Zach Cassian and, you know, BX and all of them in the lineup all at the same time. I, you know, last year maybe uh, maybe the team toughness thing was an issue. I don't see that being an issue this year. I, I mentioned earlier this team looks a lot different now. Uh, they're better built for the playoffs. They're bigger. They're not going to they're, they're not gonna get pushed around. Uh, I, I would be very surprised if you see another Brad Marchand and Daniel Sedin incident this year, to be perfect. Honest with okay, you. so JJ, you're calling it Canucks and six. Is that what, was that your call? I'm I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna call it for the Canucks. I'm gonna say it's a lot tighter than you know what a lot of what a lot of the other people are saying though. Okay, six then. Well, sure. Okay, Chris, <laughs> what do you say? Well, you know, I'm trying to stay positive uh, as a Los Angeles Kings fan <laughs> after the the disaster of a season we've had. Sound like a politician now. What's your answer? Uh, Canucks and three. That's <laughs> how no, you know what? Look, I, I I feel like there's everything's on the line for the Kings. If they lose another first round series, it, what have we really done with this rebuild? I feel like they're going to take it to seven, um, but I feel like the Canucks will take it in seven. Glad to hear that, Chris. Glad to hear you're calling the Canucks to win. Appreciate it, guys. Looking forward to this one, as always. J.J. Guerrero is a blogger at CanucksHockeyBlog.com. Chris is a blogger, The Royal Half. Yeah, he's an L.A. Kings blogger. We'll take a final break in the show and come back and talk to Jessica Garris. We'll see what listeners thought about today's program. That's next.